Okay. Uh, we've talked about uh, the importance of tissue biopsies, the various sources, salivary, um, gland, abdominal, fat pad aspirates. We haven't uh, discussed any GI biopsies, be they um, gastric or rectal biopsies. Are those still um, part of your armamentarium, or have you uh, graduated from those? I think one goes to the area where a patient has most of their symptoms. So I think certainly if the GI tract is where a patient has a lot of their symptoms, a rectal biopsy is a still a good thing to do. Michael? I, I agree. Um, so the implication then is that the GI manifestations of disease are due to the burden of amyloid in the GI tract. Is it, as neurologists, is is it your perspective that the uh, dysmotility, the overwhelming diarrhea or profound constipation is due to the burden of amyloid or is it due to um, autonomic dysfunction and dysregulation of motility? Is there a difference? Um, well, that's a very good question. I, I don't think we really actually fundamentally understand what the pathophysiology of amyloid neuropathy is. You know, earlier people often thought that maybe it was compressive and there was, you know, speculation that it was hypoxic. And I think, but fundamentally, what it is about amyloid that causes neuropathy, is it toxic? You know, is it a, just a, a burden? A, 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 you have to have so much, but, but what exactly does and how that damages the nerve? I don't think we really fundamentally understand. Mike? Um, well, I think that's correct. I think amyloid infiltrates nerves that's associated with damage and dysfunction. How that happens, I'm not sure we fully understand. So I'm, I'm not a card-carrying neurologist, so I, I can be a little provocative here. So, so do you think it's fully understood? No, no, that's, <laughs> if, if it were, we wouldn't be here. The diagnosis would be easy. Um, our, our experience with nerve biopsies at Boston University is, is not as uh, encouraging as it is at Hopkins and Mayo Clinic. We often, um, in the times we do um, sural nerve biopsies, uh, we often strike out. And so our sensitivity is maybe 50%. Uh, we may not take a long enough section of nerve. We may not section it exhaustively. So. Um, that may be part of our methodology. Uh, at the same time, I'm struck by the histology uh, of disease showing rather dramatic uh, axonal uh, and small nerve fiber changes in the absence of any amyloid deposits. And um, uh, our thinking is that the um, the TTR in its misfolding, forming oligomers and aggregates, are probably a toxic uh, species that injure nerve without amyloid deposits, and as a consequence, um, would in part explain the relative absence of amyloid deposits. Um, and in looking back at our GI biopsy history, uh, finding that there are people who have um, little or no amyloid deposits on multiple biopsies yet have profound dysfunction um, leads us to think that uh, the small nerve fiber control of the GI tract is really the essence of the overwhelming diarrhea and uh, potentially uh, constipation, but certainly the gastroparesis. Yeah. No, I, I think it's very interesting what it is about amyloid that's so toxic to nerve. Yeah. Nerve is also this very long, thin right. organ, and so you absolutely could have a major burden of amyloid upstream, and you know it's an axonal degeneration causing degeneration of the fibers downstream, and so your biopsy may not show it, and that doesn't mean it's still not a direct toxic effect upstream or some sort of amyloid burden, but I think fundamentally we don't know. I also... My father did a paper now probably 50 years ago in the 1960s he called dissociated sensory loss in amyloid. And what he did is he took two cases of TTR amyloidosis and they did nerve biopsies on both these cases and they did 
in vitro uh, nerve conduction studies and showed that the C fibers, the unmyelinated fibers, were gone electrophysiologically. And when he did electron microscopy, there were no uh, unmyelinated fibers, and yet they still had some large myelinated fibers and some small myelinated fibers. And this was from a woman who stepped on a nail, felt no pain, but felt blood fill up in her sandal. So what she felt was the wet sensation of the blood touching her skin, but she did not feel pain. So she had dissociated sensory loss. She had small fiber loss, but still had some large fiber function. So I do think there is a preferential involvement of unmyelinated fibers in TTR amyloidosis. And I think that's probably variable. I, th I think so some, too. Some pa it's not true for all patients. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Different mutations or uh, even different presentations can have uh, different subsets of fibers differentially evolved. Is, is there an understanding of why it is that certain variants have predilection for certain organs? I, I don't think so. I mean, John may have the answer to that, but I, I think this is, these are things that we continue need to look into. I, th I think it's very interesting, actually. Michael, do you have any uh, insights? Uh, not yet. Yeah, so it, it's really unclear. That's one of the uh, central questions that has evaded answers. Uh, there have been speculations of uh, maybe chaperone proteins or uh, uh, gag populations uh, and particular organs that uh, really promote um, uh, the deposition act maybe as a nidus, but it, it remains uh, remarkably unclear. I think it does, uh, it's important to understand that uh, as we group these mutations and, and essentially um, uh, and simplistically assign some as being um, more prone to developing cardiomyopathy than uh, a polyneuropathy. Indeed, there's full spectrum disease in the vast majority of people if you look carefully enough. And I think that's, uh, that's something that we really need to keep in mind. 